Nothing made any sense. <laughs> That's a loss for words. I am feeling pretty good today. How about you? That's so awesome! It's a little bit harder than I expected. They got this. The homeowner. <laughs> hey, that's me. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Grand Lady. And if you're new here, nice to meet ya. This is the story of our renovation of a 19th century abandoned Victorian home in Syracuse, New York. In this week's episode, we use a DIY at-home sandblaster as well as many other techniques to start working on that vintage sink I got for the downstairs bathroom. We also learn about and watch Randy rebuild a vintage faucet that I purchased for the upstairs steam shower bathroom. It's getting real around here with all of this plumbing. And all of the faucets are in, so we're gonna have a nice bling haul. So much is happening here every day, and I'm working on several projects all at the same time to try and keep up with Randy, but that was a long introduction. Let's just get into it. Well, we're gonna get started on this old sink, removing some of the rust from the underside, and then I'm gonna paint it a color I think will match the floor tile. We're gonna start with this wire brush to get all the big chunks of rust off. And then we're gonna move on to putting on something called rust dissolver, or Jim called it navel jelly. And I was like, navel jelly? But it actually is navel jelly. <laughs> so we'll see how that works to get the rust off before we paint it. This looks futile. We're going to give it another shot of this navel jelly stuff as it reacted with some of the rust but there's still quite a lot left. I'm not sure it's actually going to handle all this rust as I'm learning more about it. It looks pretty pitted. We'll see. Well, we're back again to check out how the sink's doing. Looks like it still needs a little more work. I'm trying to get rid of every single speck of rust so that we can stop it from rusting from here on out. Turns out it's a little bit harder than I expected. I used the wire wheel for a little bit on the places I could reach. And here I'm trying some accessories to try to get into the nooks and crannies. But it's not going that well. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring back a biographer for you. <laughs> I feel like a clown show out here. Well, in, in a way it kind of is. We're dealing with non-industrial components. This also looks futile. It's not too bad here and here, but in here there's still a lot of pitted rust around this side and over here as well. How are you feeling today? I am feeling pretty good today. How about you? Pretty good. I'm good. excited about trying out the sandblaster with Randy. Works fine. So. We realized the tip that was on this DIY sandblaster wouldn't connect to our power washer, so Jim removed it and we went and found one that did. So we went shopping and we got this adapter. It's going to let us hook up this hose to the end of the power washer. The pressure washer it uses water. It's supposed to, at the same time, suck up some abrasive through this thing as the water shoots out. So we got something called slag, so we didn't have that many choices, and we wanted something abrasive and fine. 
We're not really sure it's going to do the job and get the rust off, but we're going to give it a shot. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You're going to give it a shot with the sand blast. <laughs> we're going to give it a <laughs> shot blast. <laughs> Not very much. Not very much at all. I mean, this was all rusty like that, so I did this corner. So it's going to take quite a bit, probably that whole bag, to do all of this. I bet. And maybe some more now, maybe but actually more. it's working. It's I'm working. impressed. I did not. Wow, it. it really is working. That's so awesome. <laughs> Let's do this. Although I worked on the sink for a couple of hours, it just didn't do the job on the deeper pitted rust. I noticed it was removing paint from some areas that revealed more pitted rust, but in some places it didn't remove the paint either. So I decided to remove all the paint before I moved on. Although it didn't get rid of all of the rust, I do recommend this tool for home use. It did a really good job on most of the rust. And I also have a quick tip for how to use it too. It started clogging where the abrasive media hose met with the water tip. And I realized if I placed the media intake up higher than the feed end of the media hose, that helped. And also keeping the tip of the power washer pointed down so it wouldn't run backwards into it. After that, I didn't have any clogs. The lighter orange areas of rust are called flash rust. And that's because I've been working on this sink for days and days without putting a protective coating on it. That's just surface, so we don't have to worry about that. I can get rid of that with one coat of phosphoric acid treatment. It's the rust behind it that's darker, pitted, and it's been there for a long time. It's pretty deep into the cast iron, and that's the rust I'm trying to get rid of. If I don't get rid of that, it'll just continue to rust, even if I coat it over with a protective paint. It won't rust from the outside, but it will continue to rust on the inside. So my goal is to get rid of that rust if I can. So I'm removing all of the paint that I can to reveal any more of that deep pitted rust. The long and winding road. I started scraping the rough stuff off with the hand brush to clean it up. I got off as much of the loose stuff as I could. Futile. And then I went to the navel jelly, which is actually phosphoric, which is actually phosphoric acid. And that helped somewhat, but it turns out it, it was much more pitted than I expected. So I tried the wire wheel, which worked well on some places, but I couldn't get into all of the nooks and crannies in there in the curves. So I tried some other uh, smaller wire wheel things, but I couldn't get enough RPMs from the drill that we had to really be effective to scrape anything off. So then uh, Randy had this little device that you attach to your pressure washer that while the water is being squirted out, it sucks the sand into it. So you're spraying water and uh, a sand or another kind of abrasive media that um, blasts off the surface, which helped quite a bit, but it still didn't do the trick. Mostly probably because the amount of pressure that we could create with the compressor on the power washer really wasn't strong enough to propel the media fast enough or hard enough to go any deeper than we could. And so this is still a little bit more pitted than that could tackle. We tried a different media. We tried a little coarser media, but it really wasn't any different than the finer media that we started with. So then we thought we could rent a stronger compressor because the power washer wand actually could handle a little bit more. But today is Saturday and most things are closed. And the one they had at Home Depot, which is open, um, didn't have the right connectors. So. In lieu of 
waiting till next week, I thought I'd try some chemical reaction um, for the oxidized rust using some vinegar. But before I do that, I'm trying to get rid of the rest of the paint with paint remover. So here we are, <laughs> sitting here on a Saturday, waiting for the paint remover to work. And then we'll get to the vinegar and we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll complete it. Maybe we'll need to keep going, but I'm having a good time learning about it. We could take it to a professional sandblaster, and I did actually reach out to a couple, but I just never heard back from them. At this point, I've got about four solid days of work into this project, so I'm pretty invested, and I really want to see it through, so I'm going to keep going. How are you feeling today? How am I feeling today? Yeah. That's a loss for words. <laughs> I think today's the day I'm going to get through the rust. Oh, good. I'm about 75% mm, mm, confident I'm going to get through the rust today. Well, that's a good percentage. I will be hopeful for you. You've done a lot of work on that. I sure have. This is more work than I expected, but I'm still okay with it. Oh, well, that's good. You made a remarkable change in the appearance of the underside of the very well-used, poorly yeah. stored sink. Poorly stored. Boy. I've learned a lot about rust removal, which is <laughs> what I wanted. Way more than you ever really yeah. wanted to know. I think that I'm going to do vinegar this morning, let it sit for quite a while, and then and then I'm going to try the navel jelly again. That's good. Emphasize the vinegar because it sounds like that involves a lot of sitting. <laughs> I used 30% vinegar on this just because we had some on hand left over from when we thought we needed a bulk amount for doing the mold remediation, but we actually went a different way. And it really doesn't matter if you use 30% or 5% vinegar, they do about the same job. All right, this is going to sit for two hours and I'll come and check on it every once in a while. But in the meantime, I'm going to go remove some paint inside on something. I guess now I know I can feel comfortable leaving it on a little bit longer. After that last vinegar treatment, the sink looked amazing. I didn't see any signs of rust. I did still see pitting, but I didn't see any rust in the pitting. So in, in the rush to avoid getting any flash rusting, I dried it with our air compressor air, quickly sprayed on a coat of zinc paint, and I forgot to turn the camera on. So here I am finishing up the coat of zinc paint. And the zinc paint layer is actually a sacrificial layer that reacts and oxidizes with any rust that's left on the surface so that anything that is there is stopped. Too shabby. So this is what it looks like now after painting it with the zinc paint then two coats of primer. Thank you, Jen. And then two coats of paint. And then two coats of poly. That looks very nice, Lindsay. You like the color? I do. Nice battleship gray. <laughs> It's supposed to be sage green. You got me feeling like a firebolt high in the sky. I think it looks great. Do I think I got every single piece of rust off of that sink? I do not. I, I don't know how I would really know that. I did my very best and I think I did a pretty good job. Would I do it myself again? Probably not. I mean, monetarily, it wasn't really worth my time. I'm, I'm sure I would have had to pay someone to take the sink there and bring it back. So it would have been a little bit more than $120 with a little extra help, but probably not enough to dissuade me from getting it professionally done again. But I do feel like the things I learned about how to judge when the rust is too deep or pitted and all the different techniques I learned and the chemistry I learned, um, that's priceless. So I'm very happy to have that knowledge. So it was worth it to me. But in the future, if I see something that pitted, I will probably have it professionally done just because now I know how to do it. But <laughs> now we just have to turn it over and do the other side. We just got home and I unpacked the last of the faucets that we ordered. 
and I'm so excited to see them all together. I put them all on the table for you so you could check them out. It's a bling fest around here. We went with brush brass for the whole house. I actually ordered these from all different places and I think I got lucky. They all look very similar to each other. These are for the primary bathroom. I got two wall faucets as we have a double vanity. And this is for the clawfoot tub with this hand shower that sits on top of the holder. And this faucet's for the steam shower bathroom sink. We just have one sink in that bathroom. And this is the shower head for the steam shower bathroom. I love a ceramic shower head. I can't wait to see it in there. And this long piece of brass here is just a handle to hold the hand shower. This is actually going to be an internally plumbed shower, which is going to be different than what's downstairs. It's going to be externally plumbed, so you'll get to see the pretty brass pipes downstairs. We got a rain shower head, and then also I included a tub spout inside the shower, even though there's no tub, as it's a utility bathroom of sorts. So I'd like to be able to fill up buckets and things like that. And this one is for the big double sink I'm refinishing. It's going down in the utility bathroom and has this big long spout that swivels. Should be pretty handy. And this is the kitchen faucet. Loving this. It's got these handles that are super heavy. It'll be like that and it's raised up a little bit off of the, it's gonna be countertop mounted. I didn't wanna pull it out of the cardboard just yet. So, there you have it. I am so excited. So what do you want to talk about today? Well, let's talk about this plumbing I made you do. Vintage faucet made by Kohler that we've completely disassembled. It's real nice. It has uh, glass discussions glass handles right. and I've got it all apart and now I can rebuild it. I've uh, located all the pieces to rebuild it and this is going to go in the steam shower up on the second floor in conjunction with a diverter for the handheld wand. Have you done this before? Yes. That's why you knew how to do it. Yes. <laughs> Thank goodness. I'm, I've, uh, I've been around a few years and I've, I've seen a lot of this stuff in the past. So this is, it's fun for me to do this stuff because it works when I'm done. But that's the beauty of the whole thing. And uh, we don't have to get any uh, special connectors or anything. Back in the day when Kohler started out, they made it uh, multi-purpose, I guess you could say, to hook up. I can just put a, a half inch fittings in the top and the bottom. I don't have to get a special union or union fitting for these so that's going to be real nice i even have the wall tape for it to nice. mount it yeah the homeowner did a good job when they uh they got this the homeowner <laughs> hey that's me that's right that's you <laughs> so what is that piece called this is called the valve stem it has the threads on it to open and close it and it has the gasket on the bottom that seals against the seat to shut it. Okay. So that's the difference between a new one and one that's worn out. Wow. Are all valves made the same? No. Today they don't even use valves, they use a, a cartridge. It just installs. Yeah, okay. And the cartridge has a thing inside of it's it. It's got widgets and such. <laughs> Which is and such. So that's the thing that goes against the seat, you said. Correct. Inside the... And I looked at the seats. They seemed pretty good. Because you can replace those, too. I had seats for them, just in case. Yeah. Since they're inside, are they hard to no. replace? Or? No. There's a square... This doesn't even have replaceable seats. It's a little older. Gasket in there. That packing. 
and it's just been compacted so nicely throughout the years, but it's worn. I'm not about to leave it in there. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Vaseline. Feel it, it's funky. Ooh, <laughs> it's like a... It's silicone. It's silicone, but it feels like, uh, feels like slime, but more sticky. Got the blue goo. Yeah. Really don't need this here, but I'm just being overly precautious. Because it's old? Yeah, partially because it's old. It's that stuff made out of. It feels like a, a nylon or something. Oh, yeah. It's meant to compress. And the bottom of this is uh, cupped so that it'll seal it around the valve stem. Nice. So now you can do these from now on. All right. I'll do all the rest of them. There's, there's no more to do. <laughs> <laughs> Did they ever use, like, a, a rope for that? They used to have... That's what this was. This was kind of a rope with lead on it. Yeah, I feel like I've seen that before somewhere. Subway tile. Awesome. All of this just so we can have this. <laughs> totally worth it in my book. It looks just so authentic. I love it. You love it? Looks good. Yeah. Could you bring some light to me? Lindsay went shopping. Yeah. It got a, a plethora of stuff for us to install here, and she did a great job. It'll all work with a little work. Great. I look forward to putting that stuff in. They're getting it stubbed in for next week. We went through the, uh, I'm sure you've seen the sink that you're putting. Yeah, you that's going to be in this episode, yep. yeah. Uh, I'm going to try as a bracket. I'm thinking of making a French cleat out of metal. Right. For that, be installed. Because we got this thing. He didn't have the. Yeah, it's not work. No, he didn't have the bracket with him, so he quickly made that, but yeah, yeah. not quite going to work. So what else has been happening? We had the several days of smoke here, so we kind of had to stay away and stay inside. Well, we probably should shoot upstairs. There's a couple of things we can show from up there that are going on. Okay. That are kind of integral with the framing work. Alright. Da -da. Almost like the walk of shame. What? <laughs> the walk of shame? What? Does Randy know what that means? I don't get it. You know, I get home and my son says, Jay, you need more exercise. I say, Will you call it up and down these stairs as many times a day as I do? <laughs> no, he does not. This is the guest room. And there was all kind of uh, crazy holes in the floors that we've gotten patched in. And this wall, we noticed that all these studs were setting just on the floor in between the joists. These and ones, right? These. Well, these guys. So I reframed it on the inside by putting a plate down. 
and then putting a, a two by four on the back side, which was able to go straight up to the third floor joists. So now we're properly supported. So now this stud supports that joist. That joist, whereas before there was just no support from these because no. they were not lined up. Nothing was supported. Why do you think that happened? Well, it's called balloon construction, and I think it's because they were all airheads. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing made any sense. <laughs> At some point in time, we've got to fire block this whole floor. What does that mean, fire um, blocking? Because it's balloon construction, the joists run continuously from basically the first floor all the way right. up through. These guys. And it's like a, a wind tunnel in case there's a fire. The, the fire could chase right up through the walls. We got to put fire blocks in. Uh, we're into the process of seeing if the uh, spray foam, once it encapsulates the wall, will be enough or be considered enough for the fire block or if we have to physically go around and put wood in between every joy or every stud all the way around the house. Well, we're on the street. Is the local fire inspector says that the closed cell foam insulation that we're choosing, if sprayed the depth of the studs and covered with sheetrock, will serve as a fire blocker. If anything changes, we'll keep you informed. We're concerned about it going from this floor up because that's hollow. Oh yeah, because there's no there's yeah you can see. In there. So how hard is that to do, to fire block It's just time consuming. Is it just little pieces stuck You've in? you got to cut every one and not, not one of them is the same width. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Of course not. So, so it's a lot of detail work. Of yeah. Something I'll do on a Saturday and bring my son over and I'll just sit there with a saw and cut and he can stick them up there and nail them. And then uh, we would probably take some um, fireproof spray foam and just go around the edge of it. Now in this other room, over here, it's dark today. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Look at the bowl on that floor. Oh, yeah. You can kind of see it on camera, too. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's going to matter too much because this is going to be a closet right here. Right. Oh, I'm going to try and get a hardwood guy in here next week. Oh, yeah, for the floors? For the floors. <sighs> and that way you can get his recommendations. Yeah. He's been around a long time. Will he be able to deal with this, you think? That's what we want him to look at. Okay. All right. You have to ask the people that do it what they need. You know, we can never assume. Yeah. Because you know when you assume. What, what, what happens when we assume, Randy? You know exactly what happens. <laughs> I do. As oh. I told you, these are PG videos. <laughs> well, relatively. I think you can say... We've got our, our bids in from the electricians, and we've got a couple more questions for them. Prices are like rubber bands. They're all over the place. <laughs> Just have to find out what package that each person's providing and the contents of the package. And then hopefully we can get them in there in the next week or two. That would be real exciting. All right. Well, I'm feeling great about it. You still feeling great about it? I, I've always felt great about it. Yeah. I like moving forward with it, too. Thanks for your report, Randy. You got it. <laughs> Thanks for watching and please remember to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one.